So if you're, you have access to Houdini, you're not on mobile or whatever, you have a dual display desktop or something, um, you can get the, my kind of working session, sync up, uh, see what's going on with the nodes, the parameters and everything like that, and kind of uh, stay up to date a little bit more easily that way. Um, so just call this like test. So yeah, I have a shelf tool. You do not use pure ref for the mood board. Yeah, I haven't installed pure ref yet. I think it is, it can be a little bit better. Um, the only issue I have with pure ref is like pulling resources from the internet. It just makes it a little bit, uh, I don't know. I kind of like having the browser and like everything like that on one window, but yeah, I think pure ref, I mean, I think pure ref is really good if you're trying to zoom in and dial stuff in and, and make notes and stuff, but I don't know for, for some quick ideas or just having like everything in one, um, can be cool this way as well. I don't know. It's easier to get sidetracked <laughs> if you have access to the internet, which is, uh, is a pluses and minuses to, to both things. All right. So just get the, uh, regularly scheduled playlist going. Let me see. All right. Yeah, and for the uh, file sync, let me see. Um, if we just do, let's just get one of these fellas, fellas in here. Just do something with him, roll him up. Maybe the twist. Do the twist. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe the other direction. There he is. Whoa. He's getting sucked into the cool zone. He can't, no escape. So do a Delta mush. I feel like this Delta mush is a good, uh, I think it was Tokyo Megaplex that turned me on to it. It was like to um, try to preserve somewhat the volume when you're doing deformations. So you can make things look still a little bit realistic. Like it's not completely uh, distorted beyond uh, like recognition or, or belief or whatever. kind of getting rid of some of those seams and stuff like that or whatever. Um, so yeah, what I've set up here is this shelf tool on my end to do a publish of the Houdini scene file. Um, and then I have another shelf tool. So if I just do like a new empty Houdini session, click it. it might take a minute, to see if it works. Oh, <laughs> oof, <laughs> what did I do? Let me see. I might have messed it up. Let me just try, let me pull it in again real quick. Seagull Rush, do you know the 3D geometry for CNC milling has to be projected top down? Shouldn't be have under any under curves. So it has to be kind of concave from one perspective. Um, we have cavities. Uh, I mean, you could try the ray node. I don't know how well it would work. Um, like I, it sounds to me kind of what you're describing is like a height field, but I don't know about this internal a, like that beam or whatever could be somewhat problematic. Let me, uh, see if this works. 
All right. So just the empty scene file, click the shelf tool. Okay. And then that will basically retrieve the latest um, scene that I've shared uh, using my, my shelf tool or whatever. So if you're working locally, instead of having to like do file, download, navigate on the web or whatever, um, if you just do a new Houdini scene file, you add the shelf tool, um, you'll get it. So I can take this code right here. I haven't done a great job of uh, kind of version controlling or anything like that. But if you go into the Discord, um, just put this in the general chatter channel. Let's take a look. So you could just grab this snippet of code here, just highlight it all, control C, um, and then anywhere you want, if you just do a new shelf tool uh, under your script, you just paste it in. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. And anytime you click this shelf tool, it will just retrieve the latest um, scene file that I've shared with you. So it will try to merge it in. Um, so if, if you want to keep multiple copies or whatever, like if you just keep clicking it, it will just keep uh, retrieving things or whatever. So you could see now I have like two copies of the working session or whatever. Yeah, so hopefully it works out. Um, it's still kind of in like <laughs> alpha, what a pre-alpha phase, not even uh, beta or anything like that. But uh, eventually maybe I'll put it on GitHub or, or do some, some more uh, detailed instructions on, on how to set it up or whatever. But if you guys have any feedback or, or ideas or whatever, feel free to, to let me know with it. All right. So yes, yeah, Seagull Rush. Um, sticky fluid or volume. So I, yeah, I don't know with the CNC stuff. Um, like if you have, uh, we'll just do this font node. Um, so with that, a letter, for example, we'll just go into the Helvetica. I think the straight edges of that are a little nicer. Um, do a extrude. And maybe put some some of these just randomly on a on a grid or whatever. Um, if you project a ray from the top top down that will kind of give you i think what you're what you're expecting but i don't have a ton of uh experience doing 3d printing or, or cnc milling or, or stuff like that so i'm not 100 percent sure if it's what you're looking for um we'll just do like a random rotation random normal direction for these um and copy them Ivy's plants curling on a plane, you want to have it without under. So if these are, are your things, you don't want to have the undersides of it or the, like the occluded sides of it, essentially. Um, yeah, it's kind of, this would kind of be like draping a cloth. Um, so I don't know, that's just an example of geometry, something like this. Um, the new tool worked, <laughs> but you get all these emotes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's good to hear that it that it uh, works. Hopefully, th there's no issues with it, but um, it seems like it should be pretty somewhat stable or somewhat reliable. Um, yeah, and it should just make it a little bit more convenient to 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 stay up to date or in sync with uh, what I'm working on. Um, so if you take the grid here, we'll just add some more subdivisions. Uh, if you 
do exclamation mark Discord, you should get an invitation for the Discord server or a link to the Discord. Um, so th what I've done with this grid is just subdivided it a few times or just added high more resolution. Scully, thank you for the tier one. Let's go. I really appreciate everyone building a good subscriber base. Um, right now, the only benefit is is uh, credits or mentions when I do need to get back into doing the YouTube kind of long form tutorials. But I, I am trying to find out some other benefits and stuff like that to add to, to it. But all the subscribers helps um, support this stream. It's just 100% community uh, supported. No dark money, no corporate money, <laughs> no big banks. So if we take this grid, we do a ray. Um, you can buy 10% of an RTX 3080. <laughs> um, this is your collision geometry. And then just do reverse rays. So this is kind of like doing a drape like a cloth projection or, or something like that. Um, you could take the um, ray hit group. So this is things that have uh, found an intersection or, or intersected with things. Um, and if, then if you just did like transform, um, ray hit group, you would do the, the opposite. If you do exclamation mark ray hit group, and then just scale y to zero. Um, or you could like delete it or, or do whatever you want with it, but that would basically be the non-hit geometry. Um, so this would be one way to, to do that kind of uh, occlusion detection or whatever for, for CNC milling or printing or stuff like that. There's also the height field project that I think is trying to do um, this idea, but with uh, height field volumes. Where did it go? So you'd have to make a height field. These things come in pretty big by default. You just go down to 10 by 10. Grid spacing, just have to adapt that to the scale. Let's see what happens. You get the similar kind of idea. So yeah, either of these polygonal or, or height field projects might work. So you'd save this. Um, I don't know what, what you want me to just do this as a seagull rush ideas. All right. Yeah, you could do smooths. So I just published it, but um, smooth is kind of like, if you're doing polygonal, you would want to do probably blur. This this just seems to work uh, a little bit better and faster than the smooth node. It uses the OpenCL or, or the GPU uh, under the hood. So it will do the operations pretty quickly. Um, you want the detail, but you don't want the jagged edges. So you just kind of have to brute force it if if that's what you want. Like, I don't know how how high of a resolution you could go. Um, with the height fields, this is kind of like texture resolution or whatever. Um, so this is 500 by 500. If we go down lower, um, this is like a 1K image or a 1k height field now uh, and then height fields you could do height field blur again the radius isn't really it's just too big of a scale um, so I don't know this blur radius you start to get that kind of uh, fix some of the aliasing uh, <laughs> You might be able to fill it under with some fluid. I would be, I'm not exactly sure what you're after, but I would be hesitant about 
relying on, on like a simulation for that just because if you're trying to do something for to prepare like geometry for printing uh it's i don't know in my experience the last thing you want to do is be tweaking a, a simulation and and adjusting um like adding another step that could take you hours and another thing you have to revise and uh tweak and uh balance and stuff like that um so i would advise against doing an, another simulation or anything like that on top of everything. But I don't know, these are some ideas. Feel free to post on the Discord or, or add force as well. Um, some some talented people on, on all those uh, communities. All right. So yeah, I had some ideas here for today's uh, um, cool zone, today's project. Just looking at some different, is more interested in this like subdivision stuff. So platonic, um, all of these things are kind of based off of the, the recursive subdivision um, using different parameters or different settings, but basically just repeating like in a feedback loop, um, the subdivision operation. So if you do, this feedback here. This is a really good set of nodes or way of working or whatever. Um, basically, it will just keep doing the same operation over and over again. So if you do a subdivide, we'll take a look here. Yeah, I did share the file. It doesn't have the smoothing or the blurring operations, but it it's, uh, should be close enough. Um, all right. So we have the feedback here set to three. We're doing a subdivision of, of one depth, one iteration. So if I go over here and just set the depth to three, then you can kind of see you get the, the same idea. It's a little bit different, like relaxation or whatever, just because it's like doing it all at once or iteratively. Like this is keeps re, uh, recycling the geometry so you start to start to add some interesting nodes in here do some weird stuff to get different results or whatever that you'd add a blur that that gets um performed each iteration could also try the poly extrude Maybe do it to individual faces. And then that's when you start to get the really funky kind of fractal look. It's like the feedback loop or um, all of the fractals and everything like that are based off of that, op like just repeating, doing the same operation uh, over and over again. So it's pretty cool. Truth. <laughs> All right. You start to get gnarly bits. Can do interesting transformations and stuff like that. I think this might be, um, I don't know, I was looking at some of these other kind of layered materials that were pretty interesting. Then this one that was going like along pipes or tubes or, or struts or stuff like that was pretty cool as well. I don't know about this blur. 
doing it after. Start to get something a little bit more interesting. This is more like organic, I guess. And then just playing around with these iterations, I think you have to be a little careful because it's anything that's like based off of r repeating uh, the operation on itself. Like you can kind of get escape conditions or, or race conditions or whatever, where it's uh, just get carried away, like exponentially uh, the amount of memory consumption you're using and stuff like that will, will get out of hand or whatever. This is a pretty cool data cube. There's a ton of complexity or whatever. It's a cool starting point. So let's take a uh, take another look. You already crashed. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to be a little careful uh, with doing like subdivide, extrude. Both of these will like add double or more than double the amount of faces. And then with the repeat at the end, <laughs> can be easy to, to consume all your memory or get carried away with it. So maybe just go back here. Could have crashed it. See if it's. I don't think it's going to be able to do it with six iterations. Because usually you can just do the escape. Escape key. It looks like that worked. Um, if not, you can just like kill the force kill the Houdini session or whatever. Uh, let's see what's going on here. These things are pretty cool. Just like a little, uh, instance geometry thing or something. I guess that's back pretty much to, to where I was before. A little bit different. It's pretty cool. A lot of interesting symmetry and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go into maybe these pipes, try to get some curves, stuff like that going. Um, usually a good way to just make like procedural curves, just do, um, scatter a set of points on, on any kind of geometry. And, uh, then if you just do an add slap, you can just connect these, um, by their point order. So connect the dots zero, one, two, three, so-and-so. Um, and then you have just a random curve generator, somewhat interesting shapes. You can do maybe the point jitter, get stuff a little bit off the surface of that uh, pyramid. And um, just do resample. I'm just going to add some resolution or, or subdivisions to these lines. And then VDB from uh, particles. 
to go like a meta meta ball meta surface or whatever smooth mesh um i think get rid of some of these intersections can probably do a detangle See if it's helping. Sometimes it, I think with this detangle, uh, doing it in a feedback loop can can help give you uh, better results. And maybe just like four four iterations. Seems like it's no longer. I see a little bit of intersection stuff down there. All right, look at that. Perfection. We'll just call this um, sub sub D and uh, if you guys want to play around with any of this stuff so far, do upload of the file. Um, yeah, so I don't know, we kind of get some interesting compositions and stuff with this, these forms. Pretty, pretty cool. All right, I'm just gonna start off more, <clears throat> more simple. Um, then we'll convert VDB back to polygons. maybe stick to polygons is if you're going to be doing a lot of additional modeling operations and stuff um polygons is is supports more more operations polygon sweep is more if you're just intending to directly rendering the surface like if it's a big fluid mesh or uh just going directly to render time but if you're going to be doing additionally modeling and stuff to it usually polygons supports more more nodes um, and then maybe the remesh. So the remesh will give you a good like triangulated surface instead of this. This is like the marching cubes. This kind of gives you weird, everything is quads, but the uh, topology of it is just a bit it definitely has a look to it or whatever that's not super uh, nice. If you want to get more like this picture, you can do this um, remesh. Maybe happy Friday, duck fast. <laughs> so we'll try divide. Um, sometimes you can do compute dual if you want to go from uh, triangles to these, I, I don't know what you would call it, like a, um, what would it be, a hexagon, pentagon, hexagon, some, I guess some hexagons, some pentagons, I think basically every, um, where the, the median of all the edges are, like at the center points, that gets replaced with uh, a polygon. It's a big mathematical operation 
Um, I think Jake Rice has some really good articles about it if you look at his uh, Computing the Duel, I think. He, he does, a, he has a really good like explanation if you're curious about the under, under workings and stuff like that of the, the operation. So breakdown of it here. Um, but yeah, I just will use it. It's a good way to go between triangles or it's more organic, kind of like a beehive structure or something. You could always mix and match both of them. Could you like merge? I think Intagma did it for, they had like a crochet tutorial or something. Um, but if you merge them and wireframe both of them, you get a interesting kind of like nested structure. Could also do maybe another subdivision. getting like a pretty complex nest or something. Let's try the divide and then maybe doing some of these um, more like recursive operations. This is pretty cool you can do um, you can use attributes to define, like if you do local control, you could have primitive attributes that will uh, influence how, how, uh, how strong or basically override these parameters using primitive attributes. Do like animations and stuff like that is pretty cool. All right, do poly. Extrude. Take a look. It's amazing. <laughs> Sometimes this inside seems like it's it gets uh limited like you're you're not able to keep insetting beyond a certain distance so i think sometimes if you do clean like all these operations you can get some some weird bits of geometry i don't know if this helps or not maybe it's not helping too much Another thing you can try, this sometimes gets uh, issues with it, but if you go transform extruded front and then just make the scale lower, you can get a little bit further than the inset would normally get you. Got a chonky, chonky curve here. Let's do, uh, see what happens if we uh, get one of these loops Maybe just start really low with two two iterations. This is already a lot more geometry than the, the starting stuff that I had before. So I don't want to push it too much. Triangles look cooler. Yeah, the triangles have a, a bit, the repetition I think of them is a bit more, uh, I don't know. It's a better balance of like synthetic and organic. The, I feel like this stuff might be a little too, uh, because they alternate between like different uh, numbers of sides is a bit bit less uh, synthetic or less uh, man-made feeling. Let's try this. Whoa.
feel like this blur smooth stuff does a good job of like relaxing it so that um, otherwise you can get too much like intersections where it's pushing through itself or whatever too much. Like here you can see it's penetrating in itself or whatever a little bit. I don't know. I think sometimes people will also um, influence these parameters based off of the iteration, like later operations or, or further um, feedbacks will have less of an effect overall instead of like you keep using the same values. As uh, each feedback is performed, you use like half the amount or something like that, it's kind of like proportions golden proportions or whatever have that kind of vibe going on. This stuff is already looking pretty, pretty interesting. See what happens here. Ooh. It's pretty cool. Some <clears throat> interesting compositions and stuff with this, these curved shapes. Organic alien stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of like, uh... yeah, I don't know. Something about this always feels a little alien with uh... unnatural or whatever. This could be a cool composition. Let me just make the camera. I feel like the depth and stuff like that is pretty good. You aiming for something like a Mandelbro fractal? Um, not particularly. The Mandel Mandelbro is cool, but it. Uh, I feel like it's harder to make a Mandelbro with polygons. Like you kind of need to do. Uh, construct it using volumes. Um, the, I'm, I'm mainly just have these kind of things. I mean, it has it shares qualities with fractals because you're doing recursive operations and stuff like that. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a Mandelbro. The Mandelbro's specific formulas. Um, which again, just don't really uh, lend itself well to, to um, doing like polygonal modeling or, or hard surface modeling. Um, you kind of have to do like ray marching or uh, perform these, these operations on volumes and stuff like that. But yeah, but again, it does, uh, cause it's like recursive. You see the same shape over and over again. It shares some qualities and stuff like that with it. I don't know. Get the 
this camera. Just like a longer lens. camera just gonna light stuff overhead Need to add the redshift shelf put down the RS light some of this glass glass, uh, like reflective surfaces and stuff is pretty cool. We were sitting around like a million points. It's just not too heavy, but it can help sometimes with, especially like Redshift or GPU renders if you do a, the soup at the end. This is just a special type of um, polygon data type that puts all of the faces under what's called like a polygon soup. You'd see it's 68 megabytes in memory instead of like 126 or whatever. It's not a big difference, but if you're working with uh, GPU renders or something that's more like you want to be lightweight in terms of data IO or like memory transfer stuff, this can make more sense. To, to, to optimize where you can. Let's go add the bounce light GI. Get some more interesting shafts of light or something like that. Move this stuff around. I think with redshift, like the normals are pretty important. I'll take a look, just like a screenshot. Um, I think sometimes with these fractal, fractal shapes, um, having hard edges does a better job of like showing off the detail. So that cusp angle with the vertices to one will um, make sure when, when you go to render it, it doesn't try to like smooth the edges too much. We'll take a look with the differences between these. You see it just gives you a sharper, cleaner kind of look. It's more of like a, a little less organic is more like constructed without that smoothing stuff happening. It's pretty cool. Ooh, demon case. This is pretty cool. I like the, the cool lighting, <laughs> the cool zone, the, the blue tint. Yeah, it's like an alien uh, dragon, or like weird <laughs> pointy scales, or it's like a, a python or something like that. Ouroboros. <laughs> One thing you can do with redshift is like rounded edges in the shader, but I think right now all these polygons are so uh, so small, it's not really going to make a difference. Let me try. Just going to try getting less uh, geometry for a second. I feel like maybe it seemed like stuff was too too complex. It was like too many uh, faces or something like that for a minute.
This could be cool getting them like really pointy. It's gonna block too much of the light. See what happens. It's still going. Somehow it made too much geometry, it looks like. go into the light. Somehow he lost like the ability to see through. Stuff got too covered up. Kind of more like crystals. All right, this should have some more of the depth and stuff back. I don't know. Let's go back into the light. Spookier, <laughs> place them with arms. I like this, so we could a better window or whatever. With little hands. Is it, uh, that would be pretty creepy. Sometimes with this redshift lights, if you do the spread, um, you can do a better job of like punching, focusing the light so it doesn't spread out as much. It's like more of just a beam. Get, get a more interesting composition. It's kind of like with the barn doors on a traditional spotlight or whatever, like the metal things that you do to focus, direct the light. be cool. Yeah, I'll put another uh, update the the server's version if you guys want to go to this current. I don't know. I feel like uh, Maybe getting rid of that subdivision and then just doing some more poly extrudes. Let's take a look. It 
definitely kind of adds to the sense of scale. It makes things look pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's it's a little bit um, more interesting with that extra. Just implies more detail or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I was trying to play around with the camera to fill more of the background, but it seems a little weird. Go back. <laughs> Dig this is maybe just move lower it a little bit. This one. This one. See what happens with uh, a shader. Aluminium. Maybe just start with the plastic. I might have to reset and reboot the render. Um, I think it's like 3028 version of Redshift. 3030. I think it's the latest. I'm, I'm no master of lighting. <laughs> Some of the, like, uh, people who do product rendering, I'm, I'm getting a little bit better for, for an effects artist, but it's never been my, my strongest point. But yeah, this is looking pretty cool. It's got kind of the spiral vibe or whatever to it. Product lighting is really fake though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> It's all kind of, it's all a bit fake. It's all kind of illusions and tricks and stuff like that or whatever. Um, this one guy, it's like different product photographers or whatever. This guy, Amos, he does really cool stuff. Like just uh, the way that he showcases or thinks about like what your eyes see or just changes the form of uh, products with lighting is super cool. Just to see all the different ways that you would like add uh, people's, I don't know, just like the, the vibe of the product, if it's more playful or more, more austere, more uh, powerful or whatever. It's cool to see how all that stuff is just influenced with lighting. Become a generalist and become mediocre at everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, that's part of it, but also it's just like, uh, to fully realize like a vision or or um, to actually like stand out as I don't know to having the general skill set is is super helpful if you're 
trying to push push things to the next level or whatever. So I feel like every um, every specialty like benefits from having more of a generalist uh, background. It's like. Especially with effects where you're doing math, physics, and uh, still trying to make things like grounded in reality and, and everything like that. It's super helpful. Let's see what's going on with the specular. But yeah, I feel like if you're just aiming to become a generalist, it. Uh, you can get, is this material even applied? What the hell is going on? Um, I feel like if you're aiming like from the start to become a generalist, it can, you could kind of get sucked into being mediocre at everything, but if you push really hard in one direction or, or to what you're, you're mainly interested in and then like just fill in things with creative, uh, personal projects to fill in gaps or whatever in your skill set, it's a good way to go. Interested in everything? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's also just part of your hobbies and stuff. Like if you pick up traditional photography, it's a good way to still like get outside, get exist in the real world, but still be um, learning and, and practicing things. Yeah, it can be boring to just do one thing. I mean, effects is a little bit different because you can always move around to like different solvers and different things. But if I was like a character rigger or a uh, sculptor, I feel like I would just lose <laughs> lose my mind. I, the, I feel like the, the thing that would be the hardest for me would be to do like character animation at like a big studio where that's all you're doing is just setting keyframes, moving joints around and stuff like that. It's like you'll get one one note from uh, the supervisor and you just have to clear all your keyframes and start again. <laughs> yeah, I, <th> <laughs> I feel like it's more about I don't know. I've, I've met people that they're super into it and that's all they want to do and they love it, but uh, it's never, it's never been my, uh, my passion. I don't know what's going on with these. Uh, maybe I need to restart the render again. It seems like my shader's having trouble picking it, picking itself up. Oof, I, I picked the wrong shader. How's that for a uh, Friday brain melt? All right. Good at animation are often quite the characters themselves. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. They do, uh, they'll do like character studies and stuff. Like they'll sit in parks and just film people uh, like, <laughs> just they'll find like interesting people on the street and just use them as as reference and stuff like that they're pretty interesting people so yeah i think I, my shader just wasn't connected for a little bit this is just weird how the the uh parameters and stuff weren't coming over for a minute yeah so now i'm getting some better rim lighting that kind of stuff See what happens maybe with this ramp for now. I feel like some of these has like a bit of like iridescence to it, like color attenuation or whatever. If you use this for now, this is like the facing ratio somewhat. 
like how much the um, polygons are aligned or facing the camera. So I think you can use this color, pump it through a ramp. You kind of have a uh, iridescence somewhat. Love effects and would love to get into it. I feel like I'm light years behind becoming one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, def it definitely depends on uh, personality as well. Um, doing traditional effects, like there's a ton of people I, I know that just don't have the patience for it. It's like it's doing a simulation and waiting an hour for it is like it drives them mad. Maybe drop this in as the coat, coat layer. Just like a hint of it or something. It's like an opal or jade or something like that. I think this is a little too 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 much. Go on to the good old days of waiting eight hours for a fireball simulation. Everything's going real time. It depends where you're working, but generally, yeah, a lot of stuff is either real time or compositing. Compositors will just use stock uh, footage and stuff like that. But definitely for the bigger, bigger studios, Sony, Pixar, ILM, DreamWorks, all that stuff. Uh, their pipelines and like, it's just so, you just can't, you just have to do it brute force or whatever. I don't know about this. Uh... DNEG has some custom solvers set up for every type of effect. Yeah, I remember reading a while ago, um, DNEG had some interesting VDB stuff, it was like, I forget the name of it. On the VDB website, they have a uh, some slides and stuff like that from one of their older presentations. Uh, not nano VDB, it was um, some older stuff. It was like proprietary tools or something. You just go to the dream uh, openvdb.org or whatever it is. Um, I think documentation, uh, maybe this one. I think it was like, they were talking about this fluid solver. I don't know if this, yeah, this is a Dynamo. So those are, those are their custom fluid solver or whatever that's before side effects started doing it. All the companies were doing these like SOP based 
fluid solvers that uh, didn't rely on DOPS and you could put a ton of particles and stuff through it or whatever. Um, but yeah, so the VDB stuff is like open source. So this is originally where VDB points came from. Uh, I think it was from DNEG and then it just slowly got rolled into uh, to the open VDB branch or whatever and all that stuff. All right, let's just save this. If you guys want to take a look, I'll put a new update. I don't know, I'm gonna try, play around with the form a little bit. Oof. <laughs> you just go into the manual mode and adjust that. Got a little out of hand. Going home. Get in some procedural shading. Yeah, of course. Thanks for, for stopping by, hanging out, Demon Case. It's cool to see your, your work in progress in the in the channel. What do you mean by procedural shading dubtronics? Like uh <laughs> Let's go. Like uh, noise, just noises and, and weathering and stuff like that. Like edges. Let's see. Did I go? This point count is still a little bit low. It might be possible. Uh... Let me see what happens. I'm just adding another attributes close to the camera is like a gradient follow-up or something like that yeah I'm still thinking still kind of thinking about everything um, I, I don't know if I'm gonna do it but uh, having attributes drive even some of these extrusions and things like that could be cool like you could drive that based off of the distance from camera um, in general yeah I've been working on some some tutorials and stuff like that um, doing procedural shading is, is definitely on on my list and everything um, there's the one I'm working on putting this together online but this is like a procedural it's doing a smoke simulation and then shading procedurally or whatever with mixing shaders using an attribute. Um, still working on like a schedule for, would be like a live uh, lecture. Well, I'll let you guys know when, once I figure out when that would, uh, would be. It's starting to get pretty slow pretty bogged down. Take it easy, Steve. Knock that work out, get it, get it done for the weekend. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to drop that extra one for right now. Um, and I think maybe just overall, like, going back to the lower scale was better. Maybe, uh... Even the starting shape. Going a little bit wider with it. Take a look. It's feeling a little bit better, I think. 
some interesting areas. Maybe try putting another light in. Just trying to get something that's like a bit of uh, fill light or something like that. Starting to look kind of luxurious with this, uh, <laughs> the little glimmers of hologram or whatever you want to call it. trying to think if I can still use some of this other stuff like the uh, base wire shape maybe doing the, like a poly wire with it kind of like a cage or something like that so just trying to add some more another like layer of complexity to everything but uh, Doing it all with the geometry is becoming like a bit unstable or whatever. It's just like too much to manage. Let's take a look here. Just do a peak, kind of inflate the surface. I don't know if it's, it might be a mess with all of the same shader. It's kind of more like the skeleton stuff that's happening here. I think I just want to pull back, make it a little bit more subtle. interesting stuff happening down here I think that my light I need to get the lights back in
I don't know about this pink. It's throwing, <laughs> throwing off my vibe a little bit. making this uh, holographic stuff a little bit more subtle, like the IOR, so it's not fully reflected everywhere. It's just like only when it's uh, these things are more aligned with the camera. Just, I feel like this stuff you just want it in as like a little hint. Like you don't want it to be the first thing you see is all these specks of color everywhere. It's just like a, a little treat. <laughs> Take a look back with the camera. I can never get the redshift lights. I guess this is a little bit better. Maybe they, they improved it. But I've always had trouble getting the redshift lights to match like the render in the viewport and everything. Some plexus lines. You need you always need some plexus lines. are still updating maybe they just got moved around too much but my, my main light was Getting like some more stuff wrapping around could be cool. Too late. <laughs> How's it going, Julian? It's kind of off to a quicker start today. It's already usually <laughs> I'm like two hours in and I haven't started rendering stuff. I'm trying to um, get this cool zone stuff to like a better, I don't know, improve the process. So like I started today with um, a series of like references or mood board or whatever um but yeah i've just been playing around with this kind of recursive subdivision ideas or whatever um it's got like a bit of the recursive growth vibes to it or a bit of like fractal vibes as well um but yeah i just made like some pipes or tubes or whatever and then uh Playing around with them. Yeah, this, I, I don't know if I've <laughs> made it worse. <laughs> Might have been better before, but uh, yeah, I was liking this composition, getting it like windowed through uh, 
through itself a little bit. Yeah, I think I was getting some better results before. It was like, I don't know if I'm just too, too punched in. I'm doing like a wider angle. I think this was working best. It was like the three different uh, layers near, middle, and far. I'm gonna go back, just grab, grab the camera from the other scene. The good thing about making these versions or saving early, <laughs> you have checkpoints, you can always steal stuff. It was working better earlier on. Let's just turn this camera off. Maybe call it camera two. Take a look at some of this other oh, these lines. Maybe going even thinner with them. Let's grab the camera. All right, there it is. We're back. Yeah, I think this was just working better overall. add some of the uh, volume metrics. I think we're gonna need to, uh, <laughs> yes. I think we need to do it with the volume contribution. I don't know, maybe try the other one. other light just not doing anything. I feel like these volume metrics always add a little bit of uh, more scale, or like depth or whatever to the scene. Like without it, it's just kind of like a really small scale or everything's kind of in a vacuum or whatever.
playing around with this iridescence of the coating layer or whatever. I think it's best not not very rough, sharper, but then maybe just reducing this IOR so it's like a more subtle. But I don't know, I'm going back and forth with it. somewhere around here for right now. All right, let's just go to a new version. If you guys wanna, you're late. <laughs> just in time, let's save, share another uh, update, the scene that I'm on. Um, yep, already into rendering aloft, not much. I was moving <laughs> a little bit more quickly today. I have some references and stuff like that that I had pulled ahead of time. I think that's helps you get uh, stay focused or like, I don't know. It's adds a little bit more uh, instance on my system. You may you instance more than one of these. Oh, the uh, the update, <laughs> the shelf tool. <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing that would start to break it is using like other textures, like having to link all that stuff is, I don't know what the best way is to handle all that stuff. But um, for simple scenes and just the nodes and all the, the stuff, it should be pretty useful. Let's see what this... Some other shapes. We go over to the divide. It's like more of the hexagons or whatever. <laughs> These tiny people. Voila! Yeah, the, I don't know that I, that, that is really uh, useful that all the concept people do is like just adding a person or a spaceship is just makes it a, a, tell a story a little bit better. Like be, adds a sense of scale as well. I've never had a library of the, <laughs> I need to get that little astronaut that all the, the cinema people put in their, their stuff. Try it, maybe uh, this is like a skeletal. But let's shove it. Stuff reminds you the last of us. I never played it. Cause right now it's kind of giving me some vibes of uh, Annihilation, that movie that they had some interesting uh, color spectrums, like attenuations and stuff like that. Kind of reptilian, like mirror holographic color vibes in that movie. It was pretty cool. 
a bit of fractals um the monster at the end was just a mandel bro the fractal that she was just like it, was, it felt a little lazy to me i don't know it's like everyone else probably thought it was interesting but doing computer graphics you're like oh man they're just using the mandel bro that's it it's a bit of a spoiler for the <laughs> for the people juju really great tuts and videos in general Thanks. Thanks for stopping by and giving me the, uh, the kudos, the, the appreciation. I appreciate the, the feedback. It's good to, to know that, uh, people are enjoying it, finding it useful. Lego man peeping through his hand. <laughs> This just seems a little bit of a, seems a bit more refined. I don't know. It's definitely a, a bit whack when it's bigger. Toadstorm, how's it going? Thanks for, for stopping by. Yeah, just every Friday I've been doing uh, kind of like a sketch or a style frame vibe or whatever. Same old shit. <laughs> so you're in the battle tomorrow? Those battles, you need to practice. <laughs> I got caught off guard with mine. It was like, you f it feels like 10 minutes and then before you know it is the timer's up and you're like, oh no, no, no. Needed help for achieving a procedural anemone generator. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. the the. I don't know, the streams I've been posting on YouTube are a bit of like a in-between of, of uh, tutorials and like working sessions or whatever, but it's good to know people are finding it, it helpful. I feel bad, it's a lot for people to sift through that's just like unpolished rubbish or whatever. Vero Mix, Simon, Paul, this is some heavy hitters. <laughs> Trying to remember his ops. It's been buried. Vex nonsense and mops. But I think you can do, like having the presets and stuff like that is really nice. You're planning to use mops? Or is it a restriction of plugins and stuff? I think it's a pretty unrestricted, right? Oh, okay, because it's open source. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so that, that like, um, thought it was banned. That and just having these little, like, if you add to it or, or anything like that, um, it's probably all legal, right? <laughs> you just have a mad library of macros ready to go. I don't know what to do with this, some of these other things. Um, snippets are legit. <laughs> you gonna do redshift? You gonna do rendering? I feel like it's good to decide that ahead of time because, like, I kind of caught myself off guard with it where I was like, should I, uh, like, in the last 10 minutes, I tried to shove everything. Might, maybe I'm just gonna take some, one of these shapes we were doing earlier. If you guys wanna get caught up, I'll do another uh, publish. You can grab the scene. Um, 
I'm going to grab one of these uh, shapes I was making earlier that was like a more standard looking thing. I think with like less iterations. Um, this is some, some more interesting like geometric stuff. Houdini license required for the Redshift plugin. I'm not 100% sure if you can use it with, you might be able to use it with um, the, the Apprentice. The Redshift recently updated their um, plugin publishing and stuff like that, like before it was harder to get 3.0 without a, a license, but you should be able to get Redshift for free um, and render with a watermark now. Cody languages. Yeah, I was doing something that was called processing. Um, if you go to processing.org, it's like a Java based creative programming language. Um, yeah, hard gorilla. I think if you look at the um, side effects website, they have a comparisons. Um, uh, matrix or like spreadsheet or whatever. Um, this should give you a drop down. Like if you look here for a uh, third party render somewhere that exists. Rendering, third party rendering. So, ooh, Apprentice. Yeah, it looks like you can't, uh, maybe you can't do it with that. But, um, like Houdini Indie is pretty cheap, especially on Steam and everything like that. Um, so you could get Houdini Indie unless you're at a school that has education licenses. Um, that's nice. Uh, it should, yeah, it should be relatively cheap and then you wouldn't need to spend money on Redshift right away. You could just render it with Watermark. Uh, I, I do use Python, the shelf tools like I was sharing and stuff like that. Um, are using Python, I don't know a ton of it. Like it's, Python is less of like, a, for me at least, it's less of a uh, creative programming um, language. Like it's more for scripting for just automating tasks, like moving files around or renaming them or stuff like that. Um, and then with processing, Vex and uh, I was also doing like action script a long time ago when they would do like when it was more integrated in flash and people would do you'd do like 3d things and stuff with it um but I think right now just doing Vex and everything is is the way to go for in terms of like optimizations and speed and everything um Like a long time ago, I was doing this paper vision 3D stuff that was, uh, it was inside of Flash and you could do like cool, cool things and stuff with it. But uh, it's just a super shitty uh, syntax and, and uh, the way that Adobe set up ActionScript and then they moved from like ActionScript 2.0 to 3.0, it was a horror. How much is pretty cheap? <laughs> I don't know exactly. Um, I have a, I was buying like the annual licenses for Houdini Indie, but um, do they have it set up with the subscription based method here? It says it's like 260. Um, do they have it on the side effects website? 270 for one year. So, I mean, that's relatively cheap. So you're able to produce and sell, like, uh, I think the limit is 100,000 per year annual is 
anything above that and you have to pay the more expensive version that's like five grand a month uh, five grand a year or something yes yeah, so i bought the two year as well um so it's yeah it's like 200 so re relatively compared with like substance even photoshop like photoshop adobe charges you like 20 30 dollars a month or something like that so it's it's already cheaper than like the <laughs> Photoshop, which is pretty impressive, I think. But yeah, it's, it is too bad that they don't uh, they don't let you do the third-party renders with the the free version. I think it's because they they aren't able to like enforce watermarks, or I don't know exactly why. But Side Effects is a good kind of small company. It's good to support them. Uh, buying licenses and everything like they're definitely the hardest working developers out of any like main vfx application like main 3d software like maya with autodesk it's taken them like 10 years to improve like bifrost or whatever but side effects like two times a year they're doing uh pretty major substantial like improvements to solvers and, and that kind of stuff So I'm trying to make a kind of standard shape right now um, that I was planning to kind of like instance or put like little molecules or, or particles like flying around, uh, just with getting lost. So I don't know, maybe something somewhat simple. One thing you can do with the extrusion is like marking the uh, front, put it in a group, and then to do your additional operations, you can do it just to that if you want a little bit more control over stuff. Make some spiky boys. What's your current thought process? So I'm just trying to make a standard, uh, like a template kind of instance shape. Um, I was gonna put some floating, uh, kind of using the same tools to kind of get similar architecture or similar uh, geometry, like a similar, similar style pretty much. Um, but I'm just trying to kind of messing around too much right now, but uh, trying to generate like one particle or one instance, and then I'm gonna put it onto some, some geometry to have some stuff floating around in that chasm.
Maybe something spiky boy. You made make something with too many <laughs> controls is like too too fun to mess around with. Twist it. What have, what have I done here? That's pretty cool. Let me try maybe adding another twist the other direction. Pretty funky. Helps breaking the symmetry. Creaking. <laughs> Creak. All right. Yeah, I don't know. This might be a little too much. This could be cool. This is a bit more of like a Mandel bro vibe or whatever. I think it's gonna be a little too busy. Let's just start with that. I'm just gonna cut it. Um, let's do another geometry. This would be the going to do these with pack primitives or whatever the uh, instancing stop level pack primitives put in the shape then I'll just make some uh, points for where where to instance this so I think if I take the VDB the SDF right here out call this like spine SDF. So this is the surface sine distance field that's um, the path. Uh, and then I can just reference that in my other uh, geometry network. We just do the out uh, prefix or whatever. Then when you do an object merge, Um, it will show up because it will be like all capital letters at the start. So it would be at the top of your picker. Get it. Um, I think if I do like a box, I can do this to make bounding geometry. Um, do volume. This just fills that area with a fog or smoke or whatever. Um, so I, I can do convert the VDB. This is why I brought in the volume or whatever. It's already a volumetric format and then you can convert from SDF to fog. You kind of have like an alpha mask. Um, I think we can do it this way. We just do subtract then it's the hole that's poked out or whatever um, could do where did it go reshape SDF if you want to dilate or expand the area this is basically saying I'm not going to scatter 
points. I'm not going to place the little particles inside of so that they're penetrating or inside of that uh, structure. So if we template this, every scattered point will automatically be generated like outside of that region. You can do a really big uh, dilation or whatever. You kind of see the, should start to see like the padding because nothing can get that close to it now. Seagull Rush, have a good night. Good luck with your 3D uh, or your CNC <laughs> milling project. Let's just pack the geometry. Copy it to the points. It's too big. I think maybe just do, just shrink it down this way. We'll just make some different orientations. All right, here it is. Let's just see what we get. Yeah, I don't know, I might want to go back. I think these guys don't have a very good uh, silhouette. See what we get here. Whatever reason, like you change the uh, when you're doing packed instances or whatever with the Redshift, it will can't update it in real time. I think even I've tried it with the uh, I don't know, maybe this instancers. See if it works. Oof. Yeah, it just puts like the default one at the origin or whatever. It's a bit of a mess. Just try to get something that uh, follows like point of interest or whatever.
I'm gonna try doing just a bevel here to get like a little bit harder edges. You subdivide it, you get like a little smoothed. These things could be cool. Make another shader. Save. <laughs> you guys want the the update? Did this uh, material looks like it got applied? All right, <clears throat> saved, there's the new version. I think these things <clears throat> could benefit from the normal as well to do like the hard, harder edges or whatever. I don't know. Tiny, these <laughs> little floating prisms. crystals, little gems. Illegal address. <laughs> Thank you for that save reminder, Julian. You saved us. I've never had this air before. This is the version, this is the latest, up to version four. All right. So I think I was making this geometry spherical. It seemed to be better that way. Yeah, I'm on 3.0.20. Uh, I was using it for a while without, uh, this is the, that's the first like big crash or whatever I've had. 
think sometimes just having it open or whatever too long, like, I don't know, eventually <laughs> you'll just crash it. What happened here? It's just got out of the camera. Um, then I think with my material is maybe this glass. Let's try that. I don't know. These jade things could be cool. Gonna try to redo the lighting a little bit. could be a little better. You enjoying it, Nightwing? I don't know. I don't know if I was staring at it too long. But I was starting to get like a little, a little sick of it. hide everything with uh <laughs> with fog that's the trick Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've got l a little bit lost. Maybe just adding too much junk. I don't know about these floating bits. Try getting them out. Let's get rid of the, some of this fog for a second. Could have been better. Just a bit more... Uh, Geometric.
Let's go back to these things. trying to play around with that stuff and see what happens. It's like different uh, broad, broad scale changes. I think it maybe just can block it, block things out more quickly with this. All right, let's go back up. Could be too many. But yeah, I don't know this these floating orbs. It's kind of it's messing up the focal point maybe or just wasn't uh sitting very well. Could be too much geometry. I think I messed up the settings. It's like it's sticking out too much. All right. I have a feeling this is going to be better. Just have like another layer of uh, silhouette almost. It like breaks up the long pipe shape a little bit better. See what happens if we just set these so they're more like embedded in everything. I'm gonna try to push this one more uh, iteration as well to try to get a little bit more uh, detail into the base. The base structure. All right, 
Here it comes. Could be better. Let's take a look. a heavy heavy mesh big boy So I'm just going to go to the render, check the settings. I feel like otherwise you'll run out of uh, samples. Maybe adding the depth of fields be nice. Usually I go with the aspect, kind of like uh, I, uh, anamorphic. Let's try moving it closer to the back. I'm just going to try a bucket render, see, uh, just to get a sense of like what it looks like fully uh, resolved. My coat layer might be a bit too bright, it's hard to tell. Go too crazy with the uh, saturation. Starting to get the kind of opal, opal essence vibe. It's like a jade or something like that. Let this finish. I'll, be, I'll get some water. I'll be right back.
starting to get something like an alien uh, spaceship, alien space structure. This uh, Boca, these bits look pretty cool up here. So that, that was what I was changing with the um, redshift aspect to get these bokas or the little out of focus stuff more uh, oval shape. It's kind of like an anamorphic camera will give you that uh, that shape. Like a digital standard lens, they would be perfectly round, but these, I don't know, look a little bit more like cinem cinematic. Super glitzy, ultra luxury. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's something. <laughs> it's a good start. I don't I don't know how uh, how final it is. It's so a bit rough, but I might call it a day for here. It's a good start. I think I just like the lighting and composition and stuff is a bit bit scuffed. It's like this part here. I don't think it should be that bright. Like, I, I feel like you just want the eye to look at this shape right there or whatever. Yeah, the details are, are there. I might, it's possible playing around with the feedback loop so that like later iterations are, uh, are doing less, like to, to just add more subtle layer, like subtle detail for each iteration. Um, could have been, could be better to, to add that in. But yeah, I'll be probably ending it uh, with this render for this is the final thing for today. Could kind of save it if you like crop maybe. Um, yeah, and then I don't know, like the atmosphere, I kind of messed that up a little bit, but could it maybe add another like double up with the shape or something to put it in behind it so that you're not seeing uh, the, the void or the emptiness or whatever. Yeah, I don't know the shader as well. It might be a bit too, uh, it's like kind of flat. Maybe I had the diffuse, diffuse map up too much. Like you just want it more of a hint or whatever. Some interesting ideas. All right, I'm gonna do the file publish one more time. You guys can come up with better, uh, <laughs> better results, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's good. To, good, we got the shelf tool working. Try to do a better write up or whatever of it. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for, for hanging out again. Can look at it forever, have to go to sleep. Yeah, we're, we're, we're ending here. Um, sorry for the people on the, the uh, Eastern European Asian time zones. I know it gets a bit late over there. Um, I'm gonna raid, she, gonna raid Blake Catherine, give her the favor repay the favor um she does really really cool 
I think with Redshift, with Cinema, Photoshop, kind of like style frames, similar vibes as this, but uh, she has a lot better eye for compositions and lighting, so learn, <laughs> learn, learn more helpful tips from her. All right, hope you enjoy it.